Okay, so what is Essence? Okay, I'm just going to spend a few minutes giving you guys a quick overview about what it is, just to set the scene for our lovely guests. So um, what led to Essence is some of the problems here is what led to Essence being created. So uh, software uh, methods have been around for more than 50 years. You could say that they've been at war. You know, every method uh, belongs to their own guru. The guru controls what's in the method, what's out of the method. And uh, there, are, there are practices within each of the methods that aren't necessarily unique to it, but they are confined within the method themselves. And these uh, methods and their practices, they do have a lot in common, but there's no common ground between them. So if you were attempting to understand the practices that benefit your organization, um, you're kind of dictated by what's in methods and what the method gurus choose to put in them or admit from them. So we're very method led as, uh, as an industry and as uh, organizations trying to discover what ways of working works best for ourselves. They're also very theory based. So, you know, Scrum, Kanban, Safe, they provide a lot of theory, which is great to help understand, but they do not necessarily provide a lot of support in actually implementing uh, the method, the, the method, unless of course, you know, you pay for fancy consultants to help you with that. Um, but a lot of organizations choose not, choose not to. And what this does, it creates a bit of a gap between the theory and the actual implementation of the method. And that can sometimes um, affect the adoption and the adherence to the method. So these are some of the problems that boiled up to the surface and led to essence being created. And what Essence essentially is, is it tries to be a common ground between, um, between the methods. And it's the first time that we've had a common ground between methods in the 60 years of software engineering. It is also a standard by the OMG group. I love that name, by the way, uh, Object Management Group. Um, so it's an officially recognized global standard as well. Um, and I'll go on, there's a bit more detail about what Essence is, but essentially you can think of it uh, as in two parts, technical and human. So the technical part is uh, there are cards in Essence and it helps to bridge the gap between the theory and the implementation of the method. So it has cards that help guide uh, users and organizations in understanding the practices within the methods and adopting the methods and communicating the methods. And it helps focus on what is essential within those methods. So what are the things that you have to do in order to be able to say that you're using this method properly? There's also the human side of it where <clears throat> much like user stories, the cards represent uh, placeholders to have conversations about the practices. This can help the understanding of them and the discussion of them and the exploration of them to see which ones are right for your context. And it also enables um, a set of serious yet interactive games to be played in order to better understand the methods, their practices, and to understand what works for your context. So another way to, uh, to show you what Essence is, is um, <clears throat> this is Scrum Essentials, and it's essentially a deck of cards that describe all the practices, all the essential practices within the Scrum method, things like stand-ups, things like retrospectives, things like sprints and time boxing. You can think of um, each card representing one of those practices and if information on the practice and how to adopt it and you know what it's used for. And these things help the discussion and help the uh, adoption of the, practice, of the methods. And it helps decompose the methods into the practices that make them whole, which aid the understanding of them. And there are decks for essentially I, the decks are in development, um, so they're not out for literally every method, but there are more and more being released. Um, Scrum, Safe, uh, the other examples on the screen, um, <clears throat> they're all uh, already created in, I guess you could say the Essence library. And, you know, people like Jeff Sutherland have uh, really loved Essence and is completely on board with it and uses it in his trainings when he's teaching Scrum. Um, so, you know, we're getting some really excellent support from the aforementioned uh, gurus, method gurus, because they can really see the value of, um, the, of Essence. 
Another way to help you visualize it, and I, I love this honeycomb visualization. So you have all of these, uh, all of these honeycomb patterns are um, practices within, e within each of the methods. So SAFE has its own set of practices. Nexus has its own set of practices. There might be common ones, but you know, essentially methods are a collection of practices, you could say. <clears throat> what Essence does is it, as, as I said before, creates that common ground. You're able to select the practices that you like from each of the methods. Ignore the ones you don't need. So just because a method has certain practices in it doesn't mean it's right for your context. And essentially what you end up with is your own method, your own bespoke mixed and matched set of practices that is perfectly tailored to your needs. And that is the common ground that Essence provides and that's the value that it provides. And there's a lot of use cases about it, as you can see here, but I'm not gonna go into that. Instead, I'm now going to hand over to Andre from Hapacloid, who is going to give you an overview about how his organization has used Essence. So Andre, over to you. Oh, thank you very much. And um, uh -huh. I'm really happy to be on this side, on this meetup, uh, since normally, normally I'm on the listener side and look about agile methods and what's going on in the market and check, check what is happening. And um, just a few words before I start with my slide deck. Um, I, what I really like about Essence to summarize what, what's going on is that Essence is really a framework allowing a company, organization, team, whatever you like to frame it, to start very, very simple and very crisp um, without losing any of the benefits you got with Azure Methods. And this is what what made Essence um, for a global player like Harper Lloyd um, very, very interesting. And I, I will show you why we used it, um, from which site we came and what we checked in the market and in, in a few slides. And I hope I hope you like it. I'm very happy to to get a lot of questions just, just to get the ball rolling a little bit and to, to get really to the essence of Essence. I hope you can all see my screen now. Yep, can I get some see. nodding heads? <laughs> Thank you <laughs> very well. So, uh, like like um, Nabir rightfully said, I'm I'm um, Andre Wilke from from uh, Hapag Lloyd. Um, Hapag Lloyd um, is a global logistic company. Um, we are the big four or big five, uh, depends how you count it globally. Um, a little bit about me, then a little bit about Hapag Lloyd, and then a lot about Essence. Um, I'm working with Hapag Lloyd ten years now. I'm the IT director um, responsible basically for every IT application Hapag Lloyd has in regards to cash flow, revenue management and sales, our CRM system, uh, and we call it lovely quote to cash since uh, I'm responsible for the quote and hopefully also that we get the cash for that. And um, the next two points are the more relevant one, ones. Um, I have, have another two heads. So one head is the product transformation lead. Hapag Lloyd is and was on a quite a big journey uh, to become a product-centric organization. Before we were that, we were like very focused on projects. We learned that we need more ownership. We need more focus on what we're doing in each and every team. And um, so we went on the way to become more product-centric or customer-centric, as you phrase it. And also, I'm responsible for the global transformation into an agile world. And um, as you see already, this is quite a huge task um, to get all people on board. I, I started very small uh, with one or two teams um, of, of my, my departments and, and get them on track. What is Hapag Lloyd? I don't want to spend a lot of time of that, but, but uh, still I like to do it because my, my, my heart is a little bit with ships and water. Um, Hapag Lloyd is a nearly 300 year old company. We have more than 13,000 employees, uh, roughly 400 offices all over the world. Um, now 234 ships, we, we bought already uh, 10 more. And um, we are currently front runner in regards uh, in agile shipping. And I know everybody of you is thinking, okay, logistics and innovation, no, does, does it fit together? Yes, it does, at least, at least um, in, the, in the core parts, we need to do it. In some other parts, um, we could probably learn also a lot from other industries, but what in regards to IT, we are, we are quite, quite advanced. Um, what, is, what is different at Harper Lloyd as probably in some other companies? 
we have a global network and this global network is huge complex we connect every port in the world and a lot of hinterland location and since 25 years it is a very strategic strategic department at whole harper cloud we have basically not more than 15 applications in total at Harper Lloyd. We have an own developed um, system called FIS. Um, FIS is our major freight information system. So we are very strict with one, one database system, one file per shipment. So we are not, not very a buyer company and buy uh, a lot of different systems uh, to enrich our, our system landscape. We are very focusing on real developing work, meaning we have a lot of teams focusing on products like sales, quotations, and what is out there, and also um, very focused on our own development. So not much in the provider management, even it's still there, but the biggest part is in how we develop further our own freight information system called FIS. So IT in total is a more, more than 500 people. Um, I just learned there's some colleagues in... in um, uh, Danzig or Poland already also in the call. We just uh, opened a new office there. And we came basically um, from a very, very strict procedure model. Um, it was waterfall based. Um, it worked quite well seven years and then three, the last three years it, it wasn't uh, able to fit the needs we had as Harper Cloyd. And the procedure model was, was a pure waterfall model um, it aligned all teams and it aligned every solution we had and it, but it was very strict and it had a huge overhead when we came from a time where it was okay that you have a, like a two or three months analysis phase this is a procedure model totally totally fit the purpose and work okay but then we learned that the world is changing fast and as i mentioned shipping has a slight delay in innovation in web solutions in pricing in revenue management and also in um order fulfillment apis and we we, we learned two years ago that we need a different approach how to tackle um, this high high agile or volatile world we live in so we try to changed our whole organization and when i say whole organization i mean really complete harper cloyd and not only some teams um to a product centric and also lean and agile approach how we can tackle um the request um which are out there from the business departments um, and also from the market so we had a huge analysis of what what could or what should work well. And I tried all the methods probably you're also doing. I had one team working with Scrum, one with Kanban. I let one team still work with Waterfall. Then I said, okay, we have a change management issue here. Probably I just say everybody is, should do now Scrum. I learned then harshly, <laughs> harshly that, that um, the methods like Scrum is not the silver bullet. You always need a framework supporting your teams to tailor to the need um, which they have and this lesson i learned very hard because we had we had some issues on the one team which scrum didn't work at all they just had had a lot of meetings and didn't get any progress anymore and other teams worked very well and then we quickly came up and said okay we need we need to put our method in some kind of framework where the guys and the teams will be a little bit more guided and we had we had already the point that um, there's a card game in place. I want to stress a little bit further on the next slide, but this card, this card game was a very, very easy entry point in a huge framework because we, we stressed all developers until the, the furthest end with our procedure model and everybody filled everything out. Okay, Andre the guy is back again with a new framework and it's probably another Excel and another, another timesheet and another, and we, we, we needed the buy-in. So what i try what i want to say is that essence basically served two purposes quite 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 well and why 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 we started started looking at essence and why why we saw that is it's a good thing is we needed something for harper Lloyd that builds on what what we done good in the past and also it reaches with a method. So this is this is a very ambitious target. And the, the words 
um, were, were quite stressed in the beginning when, when I took over the, the agile change. I said, yeah, okay, guys, thank you. So Andre, please, please be at least much better as we did before and also do all the fancy things which is out on the market. And also then the second point came in, avoid a like for like replacement. So we don't want to buy something out of the shelf. We need something which is tailor-made, especially for our purpose and very modern. And we do not lose any efficiency or purpose um, in the call. And we don't, we, don't want, we don't want something which is not very flexible and not very, not, not very easy to maintain. So this was my two task. And then it goes a little bit further. Um, when we got more clear on the first two points that, I mean, we needed a solution that, that grows with us and that we, that we can adapt to the, to the needs. So um, the, the black or white solutions like Hapagloid goes fully Scrum or Hapagloid goes fully Kanban or Hapagloid goes fully Scrum and was out of, out of the solution scope because we needed something we, we can change also in the process. And I, I'm, I'm not, not evaluating Scrum or the method, but for some teams, you, you, you need a very, very good method for each team. So I was very picky in what works where. And then and we said, okay, we, we should check what, what, what's in the market, what, what is working well. And we found Essence. And what, what we were very clear is that Essence offers us a very, very huge flexibility to tailor or to use methods for every each team we have in place so um, we have a small a small team and um, responsible for method and tooling and they said okay this is this is a wonderful tool it's 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 very easy to use we can add the things we need and not only we can add the things we need we can also add the things we need per team or per per product or per cluster um like like you want to call it and then we found out or we started with scrum and we found found out that this worked very, very well, and we could also took things out of the out of the methods we are using. Still, in essence, to say, okay, for this teams, we need, we need a slightly slightly different approach, and this was was quite amazing, and we were so proud of it. So we gave it an own name. Um, what 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 big companies always good at? We called it Hypes. Uh, Hypes is our Hapagloid Agile IT product development at scale. So everything I told you a second ago is now phrased in, in one, one very wonderful name. And um, we really use it for the whole company to drive, to drive the agile change into a product-centric organization. So what was the outcome? I, I gave you all a sneak preview already. And basically it, it was essence. And I mean, the card game is a game changer. And it's not like I do not want to reduce essence to this card game because essence is a lot more. And essence, essence can also be very flexible and big. But this card game allows a very, very easy to, to grasp entry. And what we had is um, we had two teams very advanced in Scrum and say, OK, we know Scrum. We know all the artifacts. We, we are running quite well. And then I came with this card game. Said, let's try this card game. You guys are good at Scrum. Let's try this card game. And what this card game did in this team is it didn't, it didn't improve the scrum in this team, but what it did was the people sat back and worked to the cards again and pinned it on the map and on the whiteboard. And they talked about things again, like an agile method, iterative, like, okay, how, how are my shareholder working, which they didn't do a long time because they were so sure that their shareholder are working fully fine. The card game reminds them to stick to the to the core artifacts and at least think a second about it. And this this was a learning for me, even for the teams which were running well in Scrum. And then we took the card game for the team. Said, okay, Scrum does work for us. No chunk Scrum. We 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 need to stick the waterfall. We love it all fine. But even for that, this card game em embedded in in the essence model helped the teams. To get a little bit more on the path and the agile while and adapt to the thinking and then then things like okay a retro makes sense and a planning makes also sense and also just to sit back a little bit and reflect um as well and please don't get me wrong essence is much more than the card game but the card game is is a game changer to start with and so what came out of the of the one half year one year pilot phase eva eva needs to help me i'm very bad with 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 time <laughs> with time <laughs> but but the result was 
We have now as Harper Lloyd our own hypes. We are working on a second pilot. I'm working with three teams, which which offered um, uh, uh, to be to be part part in the Essence pilot. Um, like I said, the card games are now now basically fully implemented in in the teams. Um, we trained 500 people in Scrum Essence, and it's not only IT people; it's also business people. So they work work together on this framework. So it got a got a harsh reality check. And also the team space, which is basically basically the card game online on mobile and web is, is now the next big step for us, we, which we are working very closely with, with, with Eva and team to get it, get it, get more meat to the bone and get it more lively, lively in our, on, on our organization. And just to wrap it up, and I, I know it was a lot of information to digest, the learnings we had to stick to the case study is um, for the teams, it was quite well. They, they used, used Essence to reflect again. And I, if I know, I'm, the, I'm not sure if somebody in the call who, who does change management projects, but to get teams that they take a step back and reflect themselves, how things are working is from my point of view, uh, the most hardest part when you do change, because if you have a huge change and you get people to to think about why we are doing the change and reflecting themselves, you you basically um, over fifty percent of your change already, and also just just started. And here the card games help, and also gives the teams a little bit of time. So also with Essence, I I personally overpaced in some situation. Um, I said, okay, we need results. We, we, Okay, there's another provider, but like like I, I um, like I needed from the teams, I should also take a step back and and give give some air to to check the essence framework because it's very easy to I, who I'm not sure how the sentence correctly, but it's easy to learn, but but not. But but needs some time to master, like like a karate or I don't know which film which movie I got that from, but but I think it's it's quite true. And also, if if you're responsible in IT, you need to embed the framework fully. There's there's no halfway to do it. You need to train it also. Surely you need to explain. And this is also why we have this meetup. Where does Essence sit, or where does Scrum sit, and where does your method sit, or where where does your own enterprise IT sit? And I know. The first page of Scrum is do not change, do not change the method, then you're doing no Scrum anymore. And this is fully true. But then comes the big but probably in every company, as as far as I learned. Um you 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 need to explain it and why you do things. And if you if you have a but, then please think think very think very careful about it. Take your time against the first row and yeah, and be be cautious in your daily work. What we learned as Hapak Lloyd is we, we are still still working on the right level of details. So so on which level we need this method and this framework from the one side to give the developers a lot of lot of space for creativity and free time and being themselves, but also from an enterprise IT side, where do we need the harsh harsh um, world of IT controlling budgets, time scope, and all all the things you can imagine. And also what we always try to do is to balance theory and practice. And with that is, I think every team has special needs because they work in a certain way and they have certain problems or they're in, they're in a different stage and how they work because there are a lot of new people in the team or it's, it's already a very, very good, well-aligned team. So they have, they have different, different needs. And we always try to find the right, the right level of, of, framework and or the right intensity of a framework and tools on the other side just let the team be because they're performing or they're in the norming or they're in the storming phase and to balance that out we, we look we look for for good framework to to do it and also be open-minded and adapt some things of course you can always say we did it in the past and it worked well and now we want to keep it just adapt it and for progress keep focus also with Essence, also with Scrum, also with the waterfall, with your project, whatever you're doing, stay flexible and tailor it a little bit to the to your to your needs you have in a company. And just to summarize, from my point of view, Essence helped us a lot to fulfill 
fulfill this task and i'm not saying we we i have a check mark on every each of them and i'm not no in the milk and honey land and the world is wonderful and i'm happy happy and and i'm happy but but there's there's still some still some way to go and essence in combination with the flexibility to use the methods we need really helped us on that way and I hope I hope um, I, I got my point. Uh, even even I'm a very fast speaker, and thank you all guys for listening to me. Right? Thank you so much, Andre. That was a lovely presentation. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> and you're really catering to the global audience with uh, thank you in so many different languages. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Hey, um, does anyone have any questions for Andre before we move on to the next uh, quick fire case study? Yeah, this is Paul. I just did have one quick one. I thought that was great. And Andre gave us a lot of good reasons uh, for essence. Uh, what struck me, and it, this is not uncommon from what I've heard from others, there most of them are qualitative. And the question is, did you were you able to collect any quantitative data that shows the value it's brought to your company? Not yet. So we are we are not we are currently still in the adapting phase. It's not Fully, so we trained a lot of people with Essence. We we didn't ask, do you feel better with a card game or not? Um, for the for the performing part or KPI part, and Habakkuk is quite harsh on that. We just want to adopt it further. So I don't I do not want to do the the qualitative analysis yet because I just want the teams to 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 learn it and and to work with it because I think it's just too early currently. Okay, thank you. No problem. Thank you for the question, Paul. Any other quick questions before we move on to the next speaker? Yes, one in the chat from, from Alexander, I think so. Of course. Alexander, would you like to unmute and ask your question? Otherwise, I can read it out for you. So I can read it out. So, uh, the, uh, so Alexander says, so starting points are the card games to reflect about the practices. Are there other card games you played to learn other methods? Um, so we, we played a lot of, so there are different card games for agile methods we tried before. The, the good thing in essence is, is that you can tailor the card games to the methods you embedded in essence. So you get the essence framework with a method included. We had now in essence the scrum, the scrum embedded. So like I said, essence is a framework around and you can can tailor your essence framework with scrum methods or kanban or own methods and we as a harper Lloyd also embedded in essence some some corporate things you need to do in in case for audit or compliance and these ones you can also get in your card game and this, this makes it, it makes it a little bit more more tasty awesome thank you and i guess still... I, I have a question if you can hear me can you hear me okay we can, Stuart, go ahead. That's good. Uh, Andre, um, did I, am I correct? Are, so your teams are all using different um, different methods or the methods which suit their teams? That's really interesting. So my, my follow-on question, now I've got that correct, is do you, um, do you have any friction when team members move between different like teams in terms of understanding what that particular team's methods are? And how did you overcome that friction if it was there yeah and this is this is a very very well question of course there is some friction that the methods are completely different like i have one team working in waterfall because i also need to to be honest and then we have another team for the innovation on top of that uh, working in pure scrum and what we're now trying to do is we use essence and try to fill this gap at least with with tailor-made tailor-made cycles I, I know you all guys know safe safe is safe is also a very, very, from my point of view, heavy, heavy, heavy framework for enterprise IT, including also Scrum method. Essence is a little bit more lightweight, and we're trying to work exact on these fractions. We're currently not in the phase that I have 500 IT guys working in completely sync. So I try to get get at least team pools um, working on the same product and then align there the methods so I don't get too much friction. Of course, if you have a team working a two-weekly sprint and the other team is just firefighting, then you have, of course, these 
why don't why do they have it why do they have it to sprint i want to have it now so uh, this won't go away at this point but we're working to reduce that heavily thank you for your answer andre and thank you for your presentation and i was nodding despite me not having a camera so thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. awesome thank you so much guys okay lovely q a um we're going to move on to the next speaker so andre thank you very much um up next we have burkhard from munich re um uh, an insurance company so burkhard over to you yeah thank you much i guess hope you can see the slides Yes, we can see them. Okay, great. So, um, as Andre said, every company is great in inventing great names for methodology. We have our great name, with, which is MA Essentials, and I'm the official owner since a few years now for MA Essentials. And in fact, we started talking about Essence and using Essence more than 10 years ago didn't get very very far honestly but um, some people in the call were involved eva was involved paul you have seen just a few minutes in, uh, ago was involved and then we had to restart and revise our methodology a few years ago or even a few months ago and this is now fully based on essence and i would like to talk about why we did this and talk more about the context, why we did this and how we did this and what the different requirements were then about Essence itself. But you can easily derive them, or we can easily derive together from the requirements and the context why Essence is a very, very good choice for us. So we started with Essence and with our methodology essentials 10 years ago. And we tried to fix several issues at this point in time. We had, so to say, craftsmanship issues. So that our testing approach was not well enough, uh, requirements management, and so on. And we didn't have any common understanding how we collaborate in teams. And that we wanted to fix. What happened was we fixed this with people learn Scrum, people learn testing, people learn BA, and all this stuff. And then everyone was, was more or less happy saying, well, we fixed the whole thing and we didn't make the step to rigorously and precisely formulate how we collaborate in teams. So we had many slides, thousands, at least several hundreds of slides describing what we would like to do in testing and BA and so on, but did not really uh, fully use essence then something changed and what changed was we were approached by Bafin. Bafin is the German regulator for financial institutions and insurances. Munich Re is a so-called reinsurance. A reinsurance is an insurance for insurances, which means you cannot buy an insurance at Munich Re for your car, for your house, if Eva is sitting in the Alps and is afraid of a big storm and afraid of um, his house, you cannot buy uh, a policy at Munich Re. We are purely business to business, which meant in the past that the regulator decided we don't care about Munich Re or reinsurances because these are professionals, they make the deals and we don't care how they make it because we can assume they're, they know their profession. And this changed a few years ago. So BaFin issued several guidelines, directions for insurances, regardless whether this is a prime insurance, a small one, a big one, reinsurance, they don't care. And there was one guideline for, they call it supervisor requirements for IT. This was published in 2018, and I had a short look and thought, well, looks a little bit maybe old fashioned, but not so harsh and serious because they tell you, well, you have to test your application before it goes live. Okay, fine. Um, but what happened as a next step was they sent out auditors on the behalf of BaFin. And the auditors do not come with this supervisory requirements, just 30 pages. They derive hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of controls. And with these controls, they approach the company, so they knocked on our doors, 
asking, well, are you following the IT, the VIT? Do you think you follow the VIT? Let's have a closer look. So they stayed for six weeks at Munich Re. By the way, we had to pay them. And they looked at every aspect of IT. And the outcome was, um, I just had just some quotes from Bafin saying they approached 16 of these insurance companies. There was not a single model student and they considered it as an opportunity to appeal to insurers once again to do their homework. In other words, implement the guideline in full. So there's apparently homework for insurances and especially in the area of, of application development. When I say application development, what I mean is um, everything we do around applications, we develop by ourselves, but also everything we do with applications that we buy, install on premise, or even what we prefer, if we take applications that are um, operated by someone else in the cloud, software as a service applications. So what Bafin told us was, well, you have great descriptions with all these slides and people are more or less doing the right things ish. But what we are missing is a clear description with the word must. We are missing the word must. You must produce this and that product. You must follow this procedure. You must use this tool. You haven't described this as Munich Re. First point. Second point, you cannot provide eviden evidence at the moment that the employees, the internals and the, ex the externals are following your rules and standards and you have to fix it. And that was the starting point when Munich Re and the Board of Management decided we will spend some money to fix all the different findings by Munich Re and also fix all these findings in the area of application development. So then a typical approach in companies like us, people come up with an idea, well, how do we tell people what they have to do? We come up with a system that describes on different levels what people have to do, how people have to behave. We talk about policies, very high, high level board of management stuff. We talk about guidelines and we talk about work instructions for people's day-to-day -day life. And yes, I, we realized someone at Munich Re decided to call this middle layer guideline. A native speaker tell you a guideline in native English has a character of recommendation, not mandatory. Well, someone in Munich Re decided it's, guideline, it's called guideline, nonetheless, but still guideline in our context is mandatory. And what then typically happens, people sit down and write documents, many documents, a lot of documents. We have a formal structure with a template for this level of guidelines and people sit down and write dozens, dozens and dozens of guidelines for IT stuff, for non-IT stuff or stuff that's related to IT, like how do we have to engage any externals because German laws in this case are very strict. And this could be the end of the story. Handing all these dozens of guidelines to our employees, telling them, okay, this describes what you have to do and read it, follow it, good luck. And a colleague of mine and I, we decided that's not the level we would like to stop. What we would like to have is not isolated, siloed guidelines. And now every employee has a big challenge. How does it all fit and together? They use different terminology, they make assumptions, how people work and so on. But instead, let's take all these guidelines, let, let's break it down in something that's more concrete and bring everything in one single repository, at least for everything that's related to application development. Remember, application development means homegrown applications, but also something we buy on the market. So the really critical point is not having all the different slide decks and Word documents, but having one single repository for everything, the one stop shop. And this is now the big point, the big trick where Essence comes into play. Because if you want to do this, bring everything in one repository, you have several challenges. Let's talk about these challenges. So we want to have this one stop shop covering everything. And we are now in a regulated environment and Buff is very keen on looking very closely at our stuff. So we have a lot of 
processes, internal processes, external regulations, and so on. And we are a global company. We want to have one single global standard. So how does Essence help? Well, Essence first covers all the different elements. It's not just about testing or just about development or just about BA. It covers everything broadly, holistically. And even if it does not cover certain aspects, for example, how we in detail manage our project or even what our term project means, we can easily extend it with some elements that take care of these certain aspects. And same as Andrew said, we do not want to be limited to just Scrum or just Kanban or just SAFE or name it, whatever. We need something that's agnostic of these different uh, methods. And that is what Essence does perfectly. It's not bound to some specific method. Rigor and precision, that's an interesting point. Okay, so what you can describe in Essence is certain things you have to do. There are some mandatory elements people have to use, people have to follow. Precision is a very interesting point. I give you an example. The auditors told us, not now, but in the future, Bafin will request that, that every single requirement is signed off by the product owner. Now you can argue, does it make sense or is it really necessary? But um, the room to negotiate with the auditors, well, it is very limited. So we ask the question, if you tell us the product owner has to sign off requirements, when does he or she have to sign off the requirements? And the first question or the first answer, well, before going live. So does it mean we can develop it and we can test it and just before going live, they sign off a big list of requirements, everything that's now going live. And they told us, mm, no, that's not what we think. It must be signed off before testing starts. Then we said, well, but we blend testing and development, at least in our agile approaches. Does it mean, well, then it means you have to sign, the product owner has to sign off requirements before development starts. At the end of the day, we learned, so the auditors had no common understanding when to sign off requirements. And what I mean with this is, Essence forces you to be precise. Ideally, the auditors would have an Essence-like system to describe what they would like to see. With precise definition, there's a certain state of requirements. And when it changes from this state to, to the next state, we introduce, for example, a new state signed off by product owner. This would add a lot of more precision to the discussion and would, it would make it much easier for us. But at least for ourselves, how we describe now with Essence, our approach, we are much more precise compared to we, to the to what we had before with all the PowerPoints. What we also did, we took a community approach. So instead of me and another colleague sitting in an ivory tower and taking all the written guidelines in Word, and I'll break it down into essence elements and describe it, we reached out to the different communities. We have project management and development and testing and business analysis and ask them to contribute to our repository of definitions. And Essence supports this, at least that what I thought in the beginning, by having these building blocks, the so-called practices. I learned that was not the perfect idea. Why? Well, if you hand over a bunch of practices to a community like project management or tell the project management community, please write the practices that describe um, how we do project management in our company and add all our best practices. What you saw was you get a monster practice, one monster practice that describes every aspect of project management. You get from another community a monster practice that describes every element of testing. So what you see here is, so to say, Conway's law in action. The organization of the solution reflects the organization of the company. So we have the different communities and they come up with single siloed practices. When we then started a discussion, how do we collaborate, for example, 
in a Scrum-like approach, in an Agile approach, which means you blend development and testing and work management and all the stuff. We learned having these siloed practices is not a very good idea. But still, we have these different practices and the communities contribute to our repository and take over ownership. So it's not just a few people who write the stuff. Flexibility. Let's assume we have this repository of definitions for our way of working. It's comprehensive, it's method agnostic, it's unbelievably precise and owned by the different communities. And now you approach a project telling, look, we have this great repository. What they tell you is, well, that's great stuff, that's well thought and we really like it, but it doesn't apply for our project because our project is different. Every project is different. So we need something that also takes into account that you need some flexibility to adjust your way of working. And with the building blocks, in essence, the so-called practices, you have a perfect tool to do this. So in some cases, people use a certain set of practices. In other cases, the uh, people use another set of practices. And there are some practices that are mandatory because these reflect the requirements, for example, from our regulators or mandatory internal processes. Usability. Usability is now a big challenge. We have a big repository with all the internal and external processes, with all the definitions, and it's flexible, and that's great. But most of our colleagues do not have a look at this repository of definitions every day, maybe every few weeks or so. And now you have a big system that describes a lot of stuff people have to follow. That's a lot of information, and they're looking for a certain piece of information, what they read, need right now. They're in a planning session or closing a project or something. Finding the relevant information is really a big challenge, having this big amount. So what you really need is a good repository with good stuff, but also a great tool to navigate this repository. And well, I can show our solution for this in a second, just quickly. A last challenge that we will have in the future, and Eva, I think, told, uh, talked about this in his article about the Achilles heel, is we have now a big repository describing the way of working for our colleagues. That's the one side of the coin. But now they're sitting in their day-to-day -day life and working with other tools, for example, like Jira, or in our case, Azure DevOps. And what we need to do in the future is bring these definitions, what people have to do much closer to their day-to-day -day stuff and in their day-to-day -to -day tooling. That's a big challenge for the future. Ideally, of course, these tools like Jira or Azure DevOps, DevOps would have an understanding of the con concepts of essence with states and activities and web products and so on. This is a big gap we currently have. And over time, we have to close with gaps. Um, still a big to do for the future. But now we have this big repository. And as I said, well, um, we need some tooling to navigate all this amount of information. Unfortunately, I had, let's say, a, peer, a time window of about two weeks between it was decided that we go with Essence, that we revise our methodology and the point in time where people wanted to start to enter information. So there was not enough time really to go to the market looking for tools that Im, Im implement essence. Well, yeah, even not, not many, but a typical period of time at Munich really for introducing a tool, starting to talk about introducing a tool until we can really use a tool. It's about between six and 12 months. Now you can talk about uh, this is ridiculous and seems to be a dysfunctional process at Munich Re, uh, introducing a tool, a new tool, and honestly, the whole company would wholeheartedly agree. But that's the sit situation we have, and with all, all the stuff that's coming from BaFin and looking at us, no one wants to make mistakes. So revising this process will take some time. Long uh, story short, I had two weeks to implement something. So what I did was take a database, take a low code tool, 
in this uh, case, it's Power Apps by Microsoft and build something. So we did take a subset of the essence model and implemented it. And you can see it talks about, about practices on the left, it talks about activities on the right, it talks about work products and the different attributes of work products. You can navigate, you can click in some windows with detailed information open and so on. We have sorted. it. In this way, we have implemented our subset of essence which described 100% of our way, way of working in application development. And what colleagues are telling us, um, they like the approach, they like the tooling, they find at least some people are quite vocal about this, they consider the process as over engineered. I tend to agree to some extent, but um, honestly, it's just reflecting what we currently have, the complexity we have with our internal and external processes. It reflects, so to say, the reality currently of many degree in a regulated environment. And um, that's not something of essence, that's something of our internal definitions and the rules we get from bathroom. So, I talked about the stuff, what we like, like about Essence, that we have the precise structure that we can bring in every aspect of our way of working and have a holistic view, that we have precise definition, people have the flex, flexibility. And what I especially like about Essence is the great balance between it's sophisticated enough that we can really dis describe precisely um, what we expect from people, what they should do and what our best practices are. But it's not too complicated, so it's intuitive enough that people can quickly learn what are practices and how does it relate to their day of, uh, to their day-to-day -day working. So Essence is now the basis for our whole repository that describes our way of working. Hopefully this makes us happy. Hopefully this, this makes our regulator happy. At least the auditors were also quite impressed by this approach and liked it. And let's hope for the best that the next audit will have much less findings than in the past. Okay, thank you very much. I hope I was in time, more or less. And awesome. thank you so much, Burkhard. Do we have any questions? A quick question for Burkhard before we move on. I have a short question. Uh, now I fixed my uh, my hardware, so we can do a video. Yeah, um, short question. So how did you approach the essentialization of your practices? So how did you transform your practices into Essence format? So that's currently my issue with Essence that I, uh, there's no, I didn't found a way to how to essentialize the practices. So it, for me, it felt a lot about like implicit. Okay. It's implicit. Um, well, at the end of the day, first, um, I had some experience because I'm following now Essence for quite a while. I'm even a member of the ad advisory board. So maybe it was, I, I have some ex experience, but um, I think basically it was just focus really on the most essential part. So we had a way of working. We have we have our work products, and we have um, activities that people are conducting anyway. So let's write down the most essential ones. Let's try it and let's improve it. So it's an incremental approach as well, and it looks now very different from what we have a few months ago. And I would expect that in half a year or a year, it will look different again. So it also depends on um, like the person and the context uh, when you essentialize a, a practice for so the yeah. people that are doing and, this. And you definitely need at least one or two people. I think Eva or Eva's company in the past called this knowledge engineers who really know the essence approach by heart and have experience how to essentialize practices. You need some experience so that definitely helps. Okay. Just, just to step in from 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 the side, um, I, I can only emphasize just just start it and really focus on the things that matter. And I know there's a lot of things going on in the in the in the edges. Flatterrand is the German word for that, <laughs> but but just just focus focus on what you try to achieve and then start with it. And if it's if it's not 
it's not a jigsaw puzzle, right? It does not everything need to fall in place. It's okay if you just throw a lot of puzzle pieces in the middle and you have the right amount of amount of puzzle pieces there and then just go straight ahead and then tailor it on, on the way. Okay. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys, for the question and answer. Uh, Burkhard, thank you so much. That was a fantastic presentation and a You're lovely welcome. insight into Munich Re. Okay, up next, guys, we have Johan from Definity, uh, a very cool, very nonprofit organization. So, Johan, uh, over to you. Thanks a lot. Ah, yeah, I, I needed to find the unmute button. Awesome. So, let's see, can you see my one yes, slide? Can see. So, it's I have one slide, slide yeah. today. It's a great slide. Thank you. So, uh, First, I want to note that what I'm going to talk about today is uh, not only my own work. So first, thanks to Ivar who brought me into this um, cabal of essence. And uh, then the work at Affinity, I have worked with my colleague Sam Aburi, who's not here today. And of course, Ian Spence has been our um, a guide along this a, a journey. So the, my story started back in... Uh, 2013, actually, when I read uh, the paper in communications of the ACM that Ivar and Ian and a few others wrote about the essence and the SEMAT kernel. And uh, at that time, I was working at uh, Google, and uh, I, I think I, I filled in some a, a form at Ivar Jacobson's homepage, and then I, I got contacted by Agneta, and then eventually I got in a touch with the big man, Ivar himself. And uh, we, we, we made some a joint effort to get a Google interested in, in uh, the Essence framework. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't work out that well because I think a little bit of not invented here a syndrome. But uh, one nice artifact that came out of that was a very nice a tech talk that Ivar gave at Google. So if you type Ivar Jacobson into YouTube, a, a search engine, you, it will be one of the top results. So that was kind of the, the outcome of that uh, effort. Uh, and it's actually a very good talk. So I recommend you, you a look at it if you haven't seen it already. Uh, a couple of years ago, I started a Definity, which is a not-for-profit organization based in Zurich, and we are building the, the internet computer, which is a, a, a blockchain for executing smart contracts. So I won't go into any a, a details of that, but it's, it's very new technology. It's a scalable and decentralized system. Um, it's like an e evolution, maybe you can say, of Ethereum, but with a lot of additional uh, complexities. Uh, so this, the important bit here is, is that this a, a thing that we are a building, the internet computer, has never been a, a built before. So it's, it's a, a completely new technology. So there are very few uh, practices to fall back on. So that's something that I will uh, come back to. Um, when I reached out to Ivar Jacobson, I, I was very interested in the connection between uh, between uh, uh, the essence framework and uh, a phenomenology. And the reason for that is that I'm, I'm a student of Per Martin Loeb, who is a, is a student of Husserl, who is the a father of a, a, a phenomenology. So if if you're if you're more sort of philosophically minded, I think it's an interesting connection to draw that uh, the essence framework is a, a phenomenological study of a software engineering. And I think in the previous presentation, a Burkert said that essence combines uh, being sophisticated with being intuitive, and I think that that's a good way of phrasing it. And uh, what really made this this connection click for me is the definition of an alpha, so the, which goes something along the line, along the lines that alphas are essentially essential things you always work with. That sounds to me like a something out of a, a phenomenological a textbook. This was a long parenthesis which I now close. 
the, the other connection that I want to make between essence and uh, a soft and sort of my a journey is, is uh, a, a, a paper called a five orders of ignorance, which is a, to my mind, a, a brilliant a paper that everybody should read. I shelter them more easily. You can forage for food more easily. You can reproduce more quickly. I think somebody more... should mute. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, in this, uh, a paper that there is uh, well it's obviously about five orders of ignorance zero means no ignorance which is a knowledge a one a, a means uh, is a problem which you can solve like you need to learn a new a language and you know exactly how to do it you just haven't done it yet a second order ignorance is where it starts getting interesting that's typically what you have in a software engineering a project where you don't know what you don't know. You, you need to discover the kind of problems that you will have, right? So we build this a solution. We don't know when we start building it that we will, oh, all our processes will run out of a memory when we have more than 10 users. If we knew that, we wouldn't build a bug into the a system. And then the next order, the a third order is, is actually when you don't even know how to find out what you don't know. And I think that's where most software engineering projects start. And that's why the, the solution to the, so the movement from a third order of ignorance to a second order of ignorance is to have some kind of meta process, uh, which I think is also what essence is. So, so um, uh, uh, in a way you can uh, view it as, so if, if agile, is a method from which brings you from a second order ignorance to a first order ignorance. I think essence is a method that brings you from a third order ignorance to a, a second order ignorance. Just some ideas to a, a ponder on in your in your exploration of essence. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I come to my point number six on my list, what are we actually doing with Essence at Definity? Well, we just started with help from Ian Espence to build our own a custom, what we call a, a common operating model, which is uh, very similar to what uh, we saw in a previous a presentation where we had the misnomer of, uh, what was it called, a guidelines, which are actual, <laughs> required practices and that's what we in, in our org called a common operating model which uh, according to Ian is uh, inspired by an essentialized version of Scrum at scale or safe I mean I guess a little bit of both uh, adapted to our needs uh, in our case the biggest obstacle that, that we needed to overcome is the, is the collaboration between uh, research, engineering, and uh, product. In particular, because uh, in, in our a protocol, which the, the internet computer is basically a protocol, it, it has very theory-heavy pieces. It's, it's like um, IP is orders of magnitude, a simpler a protocol than what we are building. So it's a lot of a cryptography in there. There's a lot of difficult protocol. And then in addition to that, we have the usual product concerns and we have all the normal uh, software engineering concerns. And this tended to drive us towards a very waterfally engineering method. And uh, we sort of agile wasn't enough to bring us out of that. I think uh, it, it was only when we, when we, when we uh, sort of, erase the level of abstraction a bit to, 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 to the essence that we could see uh, how we could use many existing uh, practices and add a few of our own that we had learned the hard way and actually combine them together as we saw in also in a previous presentation. We added just a few pieces of the puzzle and not invent everything our, uh, ourselves. So uh, this is uh, still in the in the early uh, stages at Definity, but it looks very uh, promising to anticipate a question that we had earlier. We don't have any uh, data yet, but I expect us to have some in three to six months. And uh, the hardest part is, of course, 
right now when we have this beautiful a, a com uh, common operating a model and we actually need to implement it in the whole org and we are doing it a, a, a gradually with a, a few teams um, at a time four have now adopted it and uh, the rest will come during uh, the rest of the this a quarter uh, so that that was the the end of my talk so just a quick recap if you want some uh, some more material i referenced this uh, uh, is a, a communication of the acm paper by Ivar, which i think is a but that was what got me hooked on on SMAT and the essence. Uh, I mentioned Ivar's Google Tech Talk, which you can find on a YouTube. I mentioned the connection between a phenomenology and the essence, which I think we, we need some philosophers to explore. I mentioned the five orders of ignorance, which I think is a, um, another good a, a connection that needs to be made between uh, uh, essence and the uh, and uh, the, the line of thinking of that a paper. And I guess my final recommendation would be to do what we did and actually get some help from experts in the field because there is much more to it than meets the eye uh, initially. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you so much, Johan. That was an insightful presentation into Dfinity. Quick question for Johan, anyone? Feel free to use the chat or unmute. Going once, going twice. Cool. Okay. Oh, last, we have a, a special guest for you up last. Uh, Johan, thank you very much. That was amazing. Um, one final guest who's going to give us a quick five minute overview about how Essence is used in Tata consultancy services. Um, Samit, over to you. Hello, everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Um, uh, uh, Johan, if you'd like to stop sharing your screen, that would be lovely. Awesome. Awesome. Thank I'll you. just keep it on audio. And to keep it short and sweet, uh, I don't have any slides, uh, but I'm going to talk about uh, the tremendous experience that we've had with the essence at uh, Tata Consulting Services. Um, I'm Sumit Malhotra. Uh, I am the a managing partner for a central group called the Methods and Tools Group that is responsible for um, defining uh, the, the methods that all the projects within uh, business and technical services of TCS globally, all the projects that they do, uh, we are the group that uh, helps them with the methods and tools required. Uh, so from our standpoint, we've standardized on essence uh, we've been doing multiple projects. I'm going to quickly talk about uh, a few key things that Essence has helped us with. Uh, there are three big things that uh, Essence has been able to um, sort of um, help TCS with. Number one, it has brought in consistency. Uh, one of the uh, asks for our group was to make sure not only um, all the different uh, practices within TCS uh, start working with a methodology that is consistent, uh, but uh, we also take into account the different types of uh, way of working and uh, the different agile methods that uh, different clients of TCS uh, hitherto uh, were almost uh, married to. You know, it was almost like religion uh, for different uh, types of clients that we would go to. Uh, so a lot of us talked about this today. Um, there, uh, you know, there are people that believe in safe, there are people that believe in different types of agile methods. And, and usually as, uh, uh, as Andre also mentioned and Burkhard also mentioned, usually people uh, start getting into fights as to which one is better uh, in different scenarios, et cetera. Uh, what we've done is we've created uh, in TCS something that is compliant with every nuance of essence. Uh, and it's a derivative of essence. It's a methodology called methodology suite for business 4.0. Uh, that's a TCS uh, uh, acronym, business 4.0, for the new world of uh, industrial uh, internet uh, or uh, IR 4.0, uh, as a lot of us uh, know. Uh, so essence has helped us bring in consistency in spite of different types of methods, agile methods being used in the same uh, project. We've been able to take in 
the different ways of working, the different deliverables, and stitch them together as if it's part of the same methodology. That was one big uh, uh, help that Essence provided. Number two, what we've done is we've taken um, this concept of alphas that was alluded to uh, earlier on, uh, where um, the, um, uh, the, the whole point is uh, to take uh, the essential parts of uh, different methodologies, so to speak. Um, and uh, we've used that to automate uh, the different uh, requirements uh, for the work that needs to be done for different business domains, um, including the domain of regulatory reporting. Um, so we've uh, sort of uh, combined essence with the different modeling frameworks uh, not just things like business process modeling, uh, different standards from the OMG, from ISO, we've stitched them together, together with Essence. Um, uh, so we've not just used different modeling frameworks, we've also used different things such as business natural language, which used to be called semantic business vocabulary and rules. We brought in speech into the picture. And essentially what we've been able to do is uh, uh, bring out a, an innovative way of stitching different standards together uh, from uh, different standards bodies, uh, the object management group, uh, ISO, et cetera, uh, to come up with algorithmic uh, precision within the methods used by different practices here at TCS. Um, so because Essence allows us to define the algorithmic details, the way we are using Essence in Business 4.0, uh, and again, the, the terminology and version 4.0 has nothing to do with where the world is. Uh, this is our fourth iteration of our internal uh, use of uh, different uh, uh, technologies out there, uh, such as industrial internet of things uh, and uh, cloud and AI that we have stitched together uh, with different tooling uh, with our essence rollout, so to speak. Uh, but the, the algorithmic approach that uh, Essence has provided as point number two has helped us uh, uh, bring in the precision that we need and also bring in the automation, the ability to transfer this to AI bots that can now know uh, precisely the algorithm of what are the different activities that need to be done. Uh, this is all about human augmentation. It's not about uh, just humans doing work for software development. But, but what is it that software IT can help with? And the very first thing that you need to do is use the concept of essentials, the alphas, et cetera, to uh, be able to define the small blocks of work in an algorithmic manner, which is what Essence has helped us. And last but not the least, uh, there are many uh, benefits of using Essence uh, that we found here at TCS, but the three big ones, uh, as I said, were uh, consistency, number two, uh, automation, uh, uh, for the different domains. And number three is the fact that uh, as uh, uh, Paul McMahon uh, asked uh, a few minutes ago, uh, this has helped us do a quantitative measure of um, all the business transformation projects that we are doing uh, at TCS globally. Um, so a lot of companies talk about qualitatively going from an as is scenario to a completely different target scenario um, you know, for their clients. Uh, we have used Essence, the algorithms provided by Essence, the connection with business process models, the ability to actually measure the amount of time saved for each of the processes, process steps, to quantify the amount of uh, time saved because of the business transformation that was brought in, the processes that were put in place using Essence uh, for our clients. And we are able to monitor uh, the revenues uh, that are increased the costs that are saved to the precision where uh, at the end of the project, TCS is able to now say, as part of the growth and transformation effort of this business transformation work, we can clearly show uh, what the quantitative uh, results were of the whole uh, effort. Uh, so that in, in a nutcase is what uh, TCS has been doing with Essence and all the benefits that we've uh, gotten from it. Uh, if you need to reach out, if any of these things um, uh, sound good to you, you need more information, uh, I'm on Meetup here. Uh, my email address is just my first name dot last name, sumit.malotra at tcs.com. I'm sure Ivar or Nabil can provide uh, any uh, uh, communications that they're sent uh, over to me in case you have any questions on the topics 
that I had brought up. I do want to mention the different business domains where we have brought in automation via Essence uh, are in the telecom domain for the 5G world. We've done a lot of work. Uh, we've done a lot of work for the banking industry. Of course, regulatory reporting, a lot of the regu uh, different regulations now are being written in uh, business natural language and SPVR format, which we have brought down into precise principles, policies and procedures here for the banking world uh, here in the US uh, using Essence. Uh, this ties to um, what Burkhardt was talking about earlier on uh, in this uh, particular session. So that's pretty much it. Uh, uh, great talking to you guys. If you're interested in more, uh, please reach out and I can give you all the details that you need.